Okay, all right, getting ready to start the first test. Um, as you can see, I'm charged up to 2.30. I just unplugged, so the battery's nice and warm from the charge, I'm sure. Uh, so I'm gonna back out. I'm going to take the exact same uh, route through uh, the neighborhood, out onto the freeway, and down, down the freeway for a few miles. Turn around, come back, and we will see uh, what sort of watt hours per mile that we have. In fact, I see what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, reset my trip meter and rename it to uh, let's let's name it uh, rack test and save. Okay. All right, we'll do that, and we'll uh, actually we'll reset that each time after we uh, write down what what it was. But uh, let's get going. Let's see what uh, see what happens with this. Okay, there we have it. Um, I don't know if you can see that from there or not. Can't get around to, to, to see my screen, but um, we finished with 210 watt hours per mile. That's good on any day. Uh, went 16.2 miles, uh, used three kilowatts of uh, energy. So, like I say, that's that's a good that's a good number on any day. I'd, I'm happy with that any day. So that's no rack, nothing on top, smooth top roof and uh, so now we're going to mount the rack and uh, see where we go from there. Okay getting ready to start the second test. This is the test with the actual uh, racks on but the bars, the crossbars on but no, no load on it. I'm going to actually put a, a carrier on top of it uh, before we do the next test but uh, going to start out. Our numbers last time we went 16.2 miles, uh, used 3 kilowatts and 210 watt hours per mile. I'm going to reset that. I'm going to rename this Rack Test 2. Save and uh, off we go. The only difference on this one, I did I plugged in and charged up just a little bit. I'm not going to charge all the way to 230 where we were last time, but this the battery should be warm. It's a little bit warmer outside. Um, I did notice I had my seat heater on, on notch one last time, so I'm going to do that again just to make the test fair. And uh, again, it's a little bit warmer. I don't know that that'll make that much of a difference in the, uh, in the watt hours per mile, but uh, let's get on with it and uh, we'll see what happens when we get back. Same, same test, same speeds, uh, same route. Well, this is certainly a surprise. I don't know if you can see, again, from the way I've got the camera mounted, I'm not sure you can actually see the watt hours per mile or not, but just completed the second test. And uh, as you may remember last time, we um, actually um, we went 16.2 miles before. Uh, did the same same this time. Used three kilowatt hours both times. Uh, my watt hours per mile last time. I don't know if you can see that on my phone. It's 210. Hopefully, I've got that up there where you can see it. This time, and again, I don't know if you can see this or not either from the camera angle. Uh, but uh, this time, it's 199. Crickets, chirping. Um, 
what does that mean? Well, I don't know. Uh, the winds today are very insignificant. I kept, I was on the same route. Uh, again, only went 16 miles, but still, that should be a little bit of a representative uh, amount of miles to use. And I used uh, what 11 less uh, watt hour miles on this trip with the uh, bars, the crossbars on. So, um, folks. I don't know what that means. That's uh, I'm I'm surprised. I, I, I gotta say, about halfway through the trip, um, probably about the eight nine mile mark, I thought, uh oh. I looked down, and it was like 300 and 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 something, 340 or something like that. I thought it was gonna be this was gonna be a horrible test, but um, this is uh, this is good news. I mean, it's very encouraging as far as leaving these things on all the time. Um, I don't think they act like a spoiler or, or anything as far as cutting cutting wind resistance. That's almost impossible uh, the way physics works. But um, very, like I say, very encouraging as far as not taking that, not taking a bite out of your mileage. So um, I'm happy with that, and uh, that's what it looks like on the car. Uh, try to step back enough where you can get a real good glimpse at it, but. Here it is, um, looking for some uh, good uh, good uh, watt hours per mile with this thing. So we, uh, as you recall from earlier in the video, we did had better uh, results with the um, actually with the uh, bar crossbars on than we did without them. So. I'm Curious what this is, what this test is going to reveal, but uh, there it is. That's what it looks like with the um, with the actual cargo container on top, and uh, we'll go from there. I will say I don't have. I've got winter tires on and uh, some different types of wheels on than 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 I would with you know with a summer trip I'd have summer summer tires on and I would have the I would have the arrows on so uh, that may make a difference in the uh, your mileage may vary uh, part of the equation and I do want to shout out to Evolve KY uh, our electric vehicle group hey guys all right let's get this show on the road Okay, we're getting ready to get started with the last uh, leg of this testing. Um, this is with the cargo rack on. Um, so we're gonna uh, I'm gonna reset here for one last time. As you can see, uh, the last time we went 16.2 uh, miles, three kilowatt hours, 199 watt hour miles. To recap, the one before that was the same mileage, same kilowatt hours, and 210 watt hours per mile. So I'm going to reset this, rename it. Uh, we're going to name it Rack Test 3, save, and off we go. Let me let me also state that it's uh, very low winds today, hardly any really. It's, it's chilly, it's in the 40s, but uh, we've got very little winds, so the winds didn't really affect the, uh, the testing uh, before, so um, I'm at a loss as to why it was, uh, uh, you know, so much better with the uh, crossbars on than with, with them off. But uh, if we come back and we've got uh, even less with this uh, cargo uh, box on, I'm really going to be shocked. In fact, uh, that there's no way that'll happen. So, um, all right, well, let's get to it. Okay, all right, well that makes sense. Um, this test uh, is completed. Uh, no anomalies along the way, really. Um, uh, I want to say something about uh, the wind noise. There wasn't a whole lot of wind noise with this test. Of course, I only got up to 72. That's the highest I got in any of the three tests. I wanted, wanted to keep with the uh, within the metrics of the test. Um, so 72 was as, as fast as I went, but there there was absolutely no noticeable wind noise with the crossbars when I was when I was doing the test with the crossbar crossbars test number two. 
test three here with the rack a little bit a little bit of noise but not anything uncomfortable really so um wind noise is no problem so we finished this test at 258 uh if you remember from the test two with just the crossbars it was 199 and with nothing on at all with the naked car it was uh 210 um and this and again 16.2 miles as you noticed it was a little bit of neighborhood driving and uh some freeway driving so you know it's not a long test 16 miles but I think that's enough to give you an idea, uh, particularly since it was some freeway driving and some neighborhood uh, roads and stuff, that this is about what you'll see probably. Again, it was a uh, temperatures stayed up for all three tests were around 42, 43, um, 44 in that range. Not bad. Low 40s, mid 40s. Um, no, not much wind today. That's good too. Probably helped a little bit with the watt hours per mile but this is what you would normally uh, expect to see I guess on just a normal day and and again in the summertime you know you're gonna get a little bit better than this I'm sure but I was very impressed um, with the crossbar test because it means I won't have to take the crossbars off on and off a lot they're you know it's a little bit of be a little bit of an issue probably a 20 to 30 minute job to take them on and off each time uh, you risk scratching the car possibly so um i um would uh, not want to have to take those on and off a lot so um I, I'm, I'm glad i'm glad that the crossbar test yielded pretty good results you know i don't want to drive around every day with this uh topper on the car but but i'm not afraid to drive around with just the uh, crossbars on so um, I don't think it really takes away from the look of the car, and I'm a little prejudiced about the color of my car. I think I think they look good with the uh, Midnight Silver Metallic, uh, the bars do, so I think they blend pretty good. Um, but anyway, that's the test. Uh, again, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, for those of you who are thinking about getting the rack, but you're on the fence as far as whether or not it's going to kill you on, on looks or our uh, battery usage I think you can rest uh, easy on that one on both of them really again I don't think it looks bad with just the uh, with just the bars themselves um, and I'm not really uh, discouraged by the range even with the rack on you know in, a, in an ice car in my wife's outback we're gonna take a huge hit in that whenever we you know drive anywhere with this rack on so or the I mean the topper on so uh, I you know that's that's just the the nature of the beast so uh, don't fear that but because you're not going to drive around with that on a lot anyway so you could expect on the road uh, you know when you're taking a trip that you're going to um, to use a little bit more watt hours per mile but uh, hope you enjoyed the test um, thanks for watching this is my very first uh, YouTube video so if you like it subscribe maybe I'll make some more um, but really did this because I haven't seen any other uh, range tests yet with the uh, roof rack. So I'll help, I hope this helps uh, somebody out there make the decision uh, to go for the roof rack. I'm, uh, think, I think I'm going to like mine, so I think you'll like yours too. Thanks, everybody. Tune back in.